Welcome back to the shop, you guys. This week, I'm uh, just gonna run a real quick tutorial on how I did my steer horn inlaid strike plates on my um, bamboo back and belly duo flex bow. So originally I wanted to have a grip on here so that I could uh, be able to tell where I was shooting from and could index the arrow uh, the same on both sides since it is an ambidextrous bow. Uh, instead, the grip turned out to be really pretty, pretty good. I think perfect for me uh, with no grip added. So if I put any grip on here, there's just going to be too much girth. And so to ensure that I had a, a consistent indexing point, I went ahead and inlaid some steer horn right here on the uh, arrow pass. So quick tutorial today. Hang out. I'll show you how to We're do it. We're going to put in strike plates on both sides here. They're going to help us uh, position our hands so that we get um, consistent, a consistent uh, indexing point for our arrow pass right here. And, and as long as we've got it on the strike plate, then we'll know that we are uh, we're shooting off of the the same area of the grip. All right, so there's not going to be a shelf here, but uh, it'll be shot off the finger or shot off the thumb, depending on your style of release. And so to do that. I am going to use uh, horn. So this is a piece of uh, uh, cow horn here. I'm trying to minimize this glare. I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, here's like a piece cut out. This is the piece that's cut out. And then took a couple strips off of it. And it's kind of tough to tell but I did kind of grind it sort of flat. Um, I had ground these flat initially to use as tip overlays, uh, but it's just a little too, you know, too thin and got a little too much bend to it to uh, uh, use for tip overlays. And so what I've decided to do is I'm going to use these as my strike plate material. So we'll have horn strike plates and they'll be white. And that way I've got a really good uh, contrast on that grip. Uh, tools of the trade to get this done. I have a half inch drill bit right here. That's how big I want them to be. And then I've got a half inch plug cutter. And what this is designed to do is uh, in carpentry, when you countersink a a uh, screw or a bolt or something, you countersink it into like a half inch or a three eighths inch drilled hole, and then you can come back and plug it with the same wood, right? So it's kind of like a dowel that you'll drop down into that, that hole that you drilled, and it'll help make that hole less noticeable, right? So it'll be wood throughout, and you've probably seen it's just kind of like pegs, pegs in wood, but there's a screw behind it. What I'm going to do is use this, this plug cutter to cut perfectly circular pieces out of our horn here. And then we'll go ahead and drill in half inch holes just deep enough to seat the horn right here. And then epoxy it in place and then sand it as if it's just part of the rest of the bow. Here's my setup. I have one piece of tape on the back side, uh, on the flat, the flat surfaces of the pieces of horn here, and then just taped them down on the two ends to kind of uh, trap them in place more or less. So I'm getting both the adhesive of the underside kind of encapsulating all of the surfaces and leave me just enough space to get my uh, dowel cutter or plug cutter or whatever you want to call this tool uh, into here.
Okay, so I've got my two buttons done. We're gonna set those right in here like this. That's how those are gonna fit in. Now we gotta figure out where, where on the grip we should have it, right? And so I've got this in my hand exactly the way I'm gonna hold it. And I put a bow square on here to kind of replicate the position of an arrow so that I can get a good mark, a trusting mark rather, as to where I'm going to have that position. And I'm going to draw out the bottom line. And I'm actually going to draw it out where it contacts my markers dry. Anyway, okay, I'll get a I'll get a white pencil. I'm going to mark the line right here at the crown of the grip or the neck. And then the beautiful thing about this is I can then reverse this right over here and get exactly the same indexing point on the on the other side. So we're going to have the uh, strike plates in precisely the same location. Okay guys, so we are going to drill this hole only deep enough, just deep enough to get uh, the plug seated down in there. Now, uh, you know, we've got flat edges on the limbs right here since they have not yet been rounded over and we can utilize the flat surface to keep a a sound uh, purchase on the on the tabletop here on the bench top as we drill. And again, only deep enough. That's going to be just deep enough. Should have kept my pegs right by, but just deep enough for that to seat into. And then we'll uh, hold it with epoxy and then just sand it down with the rest of the bow. Right like that. And I can't get it out, but you get the idea. Just got my epoxy going here. Uh, making sure that I've got a applicator that's going to get into this little hole here that the uh, the pilot portion of the drill bit left so I can fill it in really good um, we don't have to be too awful careful here because we've not yet sanded the the bow Right, so any any kind of spillover or extra is going to just be uh, um, sanded out as we do our finished sanding. Now there is one trick to all of this, and that is that you're going to want to get your button positioned because there's going to be indolations in there. Uh, thicker edges, thinner edges, etc. And you want to get it positioned just right that it's going to take advantage of those properties, those little indolations there, because it will not turn in there. And that is it. In. And you can see that it's proud on i don't know maybe you can or can't but it's 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 sticking above all the, all the wood surfaces here and so it will be sanded down smooth to the edge of the uh or to be even with the surface of the uh arrow pass right there
you can see I'm starting to sand or uh, score some of the areas immediately around the strike plate here. And so we're coming down smooth to the uh, bow grip itself. Alright guys, here you go, finished, and you can see that it is just smooth to the, the surface there, All right? And the kind of nice thing about it too is if you, if you run your thumb over it, it is just ever so slightly proud of the wood. It's just kind of like this little bit of a lens shape to it. Right, and it's going to perfectly, your arrow will ride right along that strike plate. So, that is, that is how I go about putting horn or bone or any other kind of strike plates onto the, or the bows like that.